every time I say I'm done, I somehow get pulled back in, and in some cases, I get surprised. Ooh, that's a hot mug, guys. Hey guys, this is my review for The Eternals. Uh, this was a Marvel movie that I really didn't have any intention of seeing. However, the very out there aspect of the film and the characters and the world building, I was intrigued because it looked like it was going to be something different. Is it different from a Marvel movie? Not entirely, but there are some attempts at trying to be different. And it's a very kind of interesting film considering the polar reception that's happening. It is somehow the first Marvel movie to get a Rotten Tomato rating, despite the fact that there are others that definitely deserve it more. However, the audience reception for this film has been quite high. We're almost in a Zack Snyder DC movie reception rating. And I'm noticing that some of the criticisms of the criticisms are that, oh, not inclusive of this film. Do what you want. I don't care about any of that stuff. As long as it works towards the story's benefit. But probably the biggest issue that this film has to deal with is one, explaining why these guys didn't do anything for a lot of human history and the expansive cast slash story building that you have to do. You're following these celestial beings who came to Earth 7,000 years ago to take on the Deviants. Where I will say that the monster design, the Deviants design, is very well put together. It's, instead of it just being the same kind of creature and over and over again, there are some variations to them. They all look genuine and unique and they all have a very cool aspect to them. Unlike the boring ass white spikes from tomorrow war which let's just be honest that was like the laziest naming scheme i've ever seen in terms of a monster creation but genuinely i actually did enjoy the design of these creatures and their inclusion into the story even if it just seems a little silly that the only thing that they can do is stop these things and then going back to the whole argument about them not interfering with human atrocities and whatnot all i can say is if these guys were created by this big galactus looking motherfucker and they all have special abilities that will help combat these things. What is the point of the guy who can control human minds but can't do anything about it? He can't manipulate the deviant. So what is his purpose? So I thought that that was really kind of bizarre that they would give this guy such an ability but then be like you have this ability to do this thing but I don't want you to do it. The reason as to why they aren't interfering and the kind of the end goal of said thing doesn't really make sense when you think about it either. Again there is a lot that they are trying to shove into this film and there are some parts of the film where you do feel the pacing. The pacing really drags in the middle like it is very dull for a good portion of the middle and some of the opening but it does kind of go into this visual spectacle that is the ending and i do enjoy a few of the characters now while you don't really get to know all of them as much as you would like considering the size of this cast and the kind of standard marvel runtime they actually do a pretty decent job for one film that i definitely wanted to compare it to was the hobbit now i knew going in that there was no way that even with three movies I would be able to distinguish all 12 of the dwarves. I was talking about it last night, I could remember nine of them and I only could remember them by physical appearance, let alone names. So the fact that I am able to distinguish each character in this group, I actually quite enjoyed. I thought that the development and the acting by all of them was pretty darn decent, except for oddly enough Richard Madden for a few lines. There's some that I'm like, what? Why did he? talk like that. But in the end, I actually enjoyed everyone's character in this film, even if they somewhat go in a pretty predictable direction. And actually, speaking of which, more people die in this one movie than I would say in all of the MCU movies combined, obviously excluding the snap and kind of excluding Endgame, but I'm more so meaning just people just staying dead, and I'm talking about main characters. Aside from Yondu, who else that is a major MCU character who died prior to Infinity War and stayed dead? And that actually gave some weight to it. I actually cared when some of these characters died. Not all of them, but there was a few that were like, oh no. But that also does come back into the predictability of the story, which, does have a few moments where you're like, okay, you can see the beats coming from quite a ways off. The one thing that I didn't see coming, and it did hit the film a bit hard, was the massive exposition dump.
That is one big pilot. Exposition dump. A massive amount of it happens at the end of the first third of the film. And afterwards, I think they're trying to give you enough time to digest all of that. But then the film itself suffers in the middle. In terms of its creative visuals, I enjoyed it. If only wishing that it was brighter because holy shit, it was dark. I kept on taking off the 3D glasses sometimes because I needed to see more of what was going on on the screen. If you were going to see this movie, I would recommend trying to see it in a theater that doesn't show 3D because you're gonna need to see the fucking screen. In terms of the reception for this film, I feel it's very much in the middle of it. It's not great, but because I went in with such low expectations, I was pleasantly surprised. It has some good characters, not one great. It still has enough of a pull for you to care. Is the humor in some of the parts a little bit standard with that of Marvel movies? Yeah. Everyone in the theater laughed at the Ikea jokes. Can we stop having jokes like these? Frickin' plebs. Overall, I would say Eternals tried its best to be something kind of different if anything different from the normal visual formula, except for James Gunn. Now this movie had a little bit of that documentary feel because of the director, but in terms of visual design, James Gunn still has that in the fucking bag with the Guardians movie. This one tries, and it does an okay job here and there. Better than most, I would definitely say. So in closing, I would say that Eternals is not as bad as the critics say, but it's definitely not as good as what the audience say. I think it's a pretty much a decent film. It's not the worst Marvel movie, by God, I would watch watch this over Thor 2, I would watch this over any of the Ant-Man movies. It's actually one that I would almost want to watch again, maybe. And also I would say the first post-credit sequence is like, well, whatever. It's the one that's afterwards that actually got me to go, oh, they found one way to put me back in. Damn it. In the end, I am going to give Eternals a 4 out of 7. It is a okay movie. That's it. It's okay. I don't think it's super bad. I don't think it's super good. I think it's just quite in the middle. Could they have spent more time on the character? Sure. Could they have had a little bit more of a centralized focus on one character? Sure. But for a film that has so many characters, so much exposition, so much reasoning to try and explain for all of the previous events of what has happened, for a movie that jumps right in and based off of a source material that is quite out there, when Jack Kirby wrote it, it was really out there and wasn't really as popular as most would say. In the end, guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. If you did, leave a like, and if you're interested in more, subscribe. Otherwise, see you guys next time.